Welcome to episode 11 of Fireside Chats with Pastor Jed and Pastor Kynan. We hope that you've been, well, watching them. Otherwise, tonight's going to be very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. Yes, yes, yes. So last episode, in episode 10, we talked about three wars. We talked about... Um, we talked about wars and rumors of wars, yes. which consisted of the Sixth Trumpet War, the War of Gog and Magog, and Armageddon. Yes. So, um, Which we think are going to be three different occasions, but we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We don't so, know. It hasn't happened yet. Or, well, in the case of Gog and Magog, it might be happening right now. Could be that we're in the in the You should go of back yes. and watch episode ten if you have not. <laughs> well that is exactly right. And the nine previous ones before that one, if you have not. In fact, if you watch them in consecutive order They make more sense. They do make more sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, so you've made mention that we have talked about the seventh trumpet. Yes. Okay. And uh the, what well, you didn't mention. No, that. I you didn't. mentioned the sixth I didn't. trumpet. I'm we talking. both lied yeah. within the first 45 <laughs> okay. seconds okay. of this episode. Okay, okay, okay. We talked about the sixth, sixth trumpet, trumpet war. war. Okay, okay. All right. And in a previous broadcast, yes. we talked about the seventh trumpet, which self identifies as the, the wrath, wrath of, of God. God. We made the correlation that the sixth seal also self-identifies as the wrath of God. And what does we, that look like on a chart? Well, <laughs> you know, I happen to have one here. Oh, good. And just basically what it looks like is that the sixth seal aligns with the seventh trumpet. Not only that, but we have also identified just briefly that the seven vials, all seven vials, one through seven, according to the scripture, are filled up with the wrath of okay. God. Okay. So these three items here, this is of course a multiple item, right? Uh, are all aligned in our chronology. Well, let me and just look, let me just say. Yes. Yes. What is this beautiful? Well, notice the arrows on that beautiful straight line. I like the arrows. They are pointing toward heaven, yes. or at least where we think heaven is. Yes. And uh, so that just indicates the rapture of the church. Now, if you missed our lesson on the rapture of the church, you would want to argue because some of you th are hoping it's going to happen back here, or maybe back here, or maybe <laughs> back here. <laughs> Uh, or somewhere else before we get too close to here. Right. But anyway, I'm just telling you, if you really want to know the truth, go back and watch our previous episodes. That's the key. Amen. And I think that we will convince you scripturally of what we're talking about. Now, so we've talked about the we've talked about the the, the seventh trumpet. We've also talked about the uh, pardon me, the seventh uh, trumpet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And we, we talked about the Sixth Trumpet, Trumpet War. War. But what I want to do tonight, we want to talk about the other trumpets. Okay. And we're going to actually, to make this a little bit easier on someone, yes. back up and start with number one. Nice. Okay. And, and, and part of, you know, of course, we want to understand what they are. Right. But we also want to understand how they fall out on the, the, the timeline because the seals, if you have watched from the beginning, you understand that we have the apostate church, which is the white horse rider, starting even prior to 300 A.D. In fact, uh, quite honestly, 
the Apostle Paul said that the spirit of Antichrist doth right. already work in his day. Right. So, uh, it so was pretty already, much very yes. shortly after the church was born, yes. the apostate church was born. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, then we talked about uh, the second seal, which was the red horse rider. Mm -hmm. We identified that as the spirit of communism. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we can. We. It's hard to pin down exactly. We. Can, I mean, we could go to where. Well, you know, Marx lived at this time, and Marx wrote his book at this time, and so forth. But we're just putting in there in general the eighteen hundreds, um, and so. Uh, and then the the third seal we talked about the black horse rider, mm -hmm. uh, and identified that as the spirit of capitalism. Right. Okay. Or or and, materialism. Uh, exactly. Uh, I think the spirit of capitalism and materialism go hand in yeah. hand. And we just identified that vaguely as being in the 1900s. Uh, basically, before that, people were just just trying to get by. Right. You know. Uh, you know they were they were not before that they were not looking for a bigger house or a bigger car or right. a fancier car they were looking for a bigger loaf of bread right they were yeah. just barely yeah. surviving and so that that, that kind of gives us a little bit of an idea that this the the timeline for the seals begins just in the first century or two after the formation of the church the outpouring of the Holy Ghost and continues all the way through until the rapture of the church and beyond. Uh -huh. Okay, so we understand that that timeline is a 2,000 year timeline. It's a really, yeah, yeah, it's the longest of the timelines. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Now, I have told you in, that in relationship with the seals that the trumpets occupies a shorter timeline. Mm -hmm. And we want to examine that a little bit tonight. But in order to do that, we know where they end. Yes. We just don't know where they begin. All and right. so that's what we're going to do. Now, are you saying that we are going to start at the beginning? Well, it's a beginning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. As uh Yes. As as uh who was it that said that? I think the author Patrick Rothfuss said. <laughs> I don't even It was not it. the beginning, but it was a beginning. He's not in the Bible. Oh, well, I was thinking more in terms of a, a different author. Mm. Um, and, and, and his name slips me right now, but he's one of your favorite authors. Well, rather than beginning a guessing game that could go on for some time, we're going to get to the first trumpet in Revelation chapter 8. Chapter 8. Yes, indeed. So... We want to go there. Now, notice this, and, and we made mention of this before. Chapter 8 begins with the last of the seals, and that is, that as we told you, was a just a, a little bit of an error. And I don't mean in the Scripture, but I mean in the way we divided the Scripture, and we meaning someone a long time ago. Uh, and, but, but just following that first verse, it says, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. That, of course, concluded the seals, and the dividing point of that chapter should have been the next uh, after that verse. And right. that verse reads, And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Now I will say this, that little divider between verse 1 and verse 2 my sister-in-law would have said, meanwhile, back at the ranch, and I saw the seven angels. And what yes. she would mean is, while this one thing had been happening, yeah. meanwhile, this other thing was happening yes. along the same timeline. Yes, and, and keep in mind that John is being given a series of visions. Right. It's not one vision. It's not one long vision for the whole book of Revelation. But he is given a series of visions. And each time he would begin by saying, and I saw. Right. Okay. And so then we are now looking at another vision. And this vision is the vision of the seven trumpets. trumpets. Yes. Now, uh, just for the sake of time, and we're not real good at conserving time here at these fireside chats because it feels so good to be by the fire when either there's snow on the ground outside. Yeah. And, and we're chatting. Uh, and we're chatting. Yes, we're chatting away. Uh, so I want to just 
jump on down uh, to uh, to verse six and uh, just jump in there, and it says, "And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound." And then verse number seven identifies the first angel. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. Mm. Now, that is the entire amount of information that the Bible gives us about the first trumpet. Global warming. <laughs> well, <laughs> I just identified the first trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> tell you what, just hold that thought <laughs> for a few minutes. Or uh, forever. Or, for, or forever, <laughs> baby. Just hold your peace. Uh, uh, because we don't have a lot of information there. It just says that there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. Weird, man. And they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of trees was burnt up and all green grass was burnt up. Now, at first glance, I have to say, I don't have a clue, okay? okay. However, however, uh, I've taken more glances, ah. okay? But in order for you to follow my line of thinking, okay. I want to kind of move ahead, and then we'll come back to it. I want to put a few things in perspective. Mm, okay. All right. So we're going to move on past the first trumpet and then review the first trumpet after we have trumpeted the second time. I think so. I think so. So why don't you read that next next two verses, eight All right. and nine. So in verse number eight of Revelation chapter eight, and the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. Well, that's, that gives us a little bit more information of, of things that are taking place around the blowing of the second trumpet. First of all, it tells us, now keep in mind, this is what John saw. Right. This was his vision. And it says that, uh, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a few things in here that quite honestly, and, and we're trying to be very open and honest about yeah. this so that you understand that we're not trying to convince you of something that we don't have actual proof for. And there are a few things in here that I honestly cannot back it up with historical fact. But let me just here's my reasoning because one thing out of these two verses triggered something that I had read mm -hmm. and I tried to go back and find that article and I have not been able to find it but it is a it is a apparently a documented historical fact uh, that in World War II I, I, I did have the exact number of the ships that were engaged in that, that conflict that lasted for five to seven years, just depending on how you count. Um, and uh, and this, this particular uh, author had documented the fact that one out of every three ships that was put into service by all the nations involved in World War II, that one out of three was destroyed. Wow. Y yes, and that had a particular significance to me because my dad, your grandfather, 
Andrew Houston Douglas uh, was on one of those ships. Yeah. And uh, he was uh, he was not on one that was destroyed, but he was also not on one that managed to not be hit. He was on a ship that was was uh, partially sunk, and they actually managed to get it back to New York, but it was uh, uh, a big uh, aircraft carrier, and he was working as a diesel mechanic down in the bowels of that ship in the, uh, in the engine room. Uh, he helped to keep those, those giant diesel engines running yeah. to keep that big aircraft carrier moving. And, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm saying an aircraft carrier, but it was a destroyer called the Franklin. And, okay. uh, and it was hit in the Philippines and was uh, partially sunk. It was, it, was, it was leaning. It was almost going down. And, and they managed somehow to tow it uh, out of that battle and, and get it back to New York uh, Harbor, as best I recall. But, but anyway, uh, a one out of every three ships that was put into service in, New York, in, 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 in World War II uh, was destroyed. And uh, now that's taking the total figures from all of the countries involved. Right. Um, and so that was kind of a significant thing when I read that yeah. because I, I, it brought back to my mind this scripture. Right. And I'm thinking to myself, how many occasions in... In, 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 in my history, remembrance right. yeah. of, 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 of historical events, um, did that happen that where a third of the ships were destroyed? Mm -hmm. And so I got to looking at this a little bit closer in the background of World War II. Okay. Okay. And then I looked at that first verse that we read, verse number eight, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. Right. Now, I was trying to think, what would a mountain look like if it was burning with fire? It looked like a volcano, right? Well, that would be my first thought, but then again, uh, the how do you throw a volcano into the sea? I don't, now that I don't know. Okay. And it dawned on me one day because I was happened to be looking at a picture from Hiroshima. Nuclear bomb. An or atomic, atomic bomb. An atomic either. explosion. Yeah. An atomic explosion. And I probably everyone has seen this. Right. Uh, when sort you, of a, a nuclear uh, or an atomic explosion, it looks like a mushroom. Uh, and, and and just it just grow and there and it just glows it's just yeah and 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 and, and it, it stuff is just falling and falling yeah. and falling and falling and it, it takes a long time for it to happen but eventually it falls into the sea right. it looks like a mountain that is burning right that falls into the sea That's now wild. keep in mind what John wrote was what he, he saw. was describing what he saw and he didn't have a clue what an atomic explosion was. Right. But he knew what a fair, mountain was. <laughs> when we dropped it, we weren't absolutely, we didn't absolutely know what an atomic explosion exactly. was. Exactly. So, wow. That, I mean, it does look like. Yeah. It does look like a, a burning mountain. Yes, yes. Now, because of those two connections here, I'm going to have to say that this in my mind, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that this trumpet is World War II. Okay. Now, uh, there's a few things there that I mentioned in there that says, uh, you know, it says, uh, 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 let's see, uh, said, and the third part of the sea became blood. Now, keep in mind, when John sees something like that, he's describing it in terms of something that he knows. He knows what blood looks like. Uh, and 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 I have no idea we also don't what know he was seeing. If it's literal, right, or right. Figurative. Well, and it goes on and says that a third of the let's see, what was it say? Uh, it said the third part of the creatures that were in the sea and had life died. Well, I'm sure that that's a whole lot of sea creatures died from that all of that atomic uh, waste that was falling into the ocean. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, 
I don't really know how he uh, came to, excuse me, conclude right. that it was a third part of the creatures in the sea. Uh, now, it, it's not saying that a third part of all the creatures in all the seas died. Right. It's that a third part of the uh, creatures uh, that were in the sea and had life died. So, bottom line is, I'm going to have to go with World War II. Now, is that your final answer? That is my final answer. All right. So, uh, okay. So we're seeing, and, and we're basing a lot of this on the fact that we're basing a lot of it on the fact that we we are trying. And, and see, here's the thing. There is always the possibility. We have assigned some historical events to the seals. To some of the seals, yes. Right. Some of the things that have happened that we've identified as the seals are history. Right. Some of them haven't occurred yet. Right. That helps us to understand where we are on that timeline. Right. The same way with the trumpets. We're trying to determine have any of the events of the seven trumpets taken place yet. Right. We know that the sixth and seventh trumpets have not taken place yet. Right. Now, we're trying to identify have any of the previous ones taken place yet? Are they historical events? There's always the possibility that everything is in front of us in the future. Maybe it's things that will be more obvious than this, right. but we have to consider the possibility that, that perhaps is... these events have taken place. Right. And the way I feel right now is that I believe the second trumpet is World War II. Okay. Now, what does that mean? That means that, we're, we're, that, means that the first trumpet would be something that took place before World War II. And uh, I have a suggestion. Okay. Global warming. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, my, suggestion, <laughs> my suggestion is actually World War I. And well, I'll tell you why. Tell me why, because, because it's that the was one before the last. Two. Well, that's part of it. Yeah. But that was the last major war in which we used um, in which we primarily used ground warfare yeah and I yeah. say that because that was the last major war that we used horses it is insane how many horses died in World War one but we would come through these armies are moving across these large amounts of territory and they are decimating the countryside. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, they are, yes. I mean, burning it. It was a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat. It was. It was a whole lot of, of, of person to person, yes. you know, uh, encounters. Uh, more modern warfare is becoming more distant because yeah. we're trying to preserve life. Right. Except not theirs. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and, the, yeah. and that was still pre-technology to the point where we still weren't even necessarily using jeeps well, to get to the front. We and were let's, still using horsemen. Right, and let's go back and, and look and see what it said. It said, the first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt mm. up. Now, they tell me... And I really was not there. Okay. <laughs> uh, Methinks thou dost protest too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they tell me that all of Europe was the battlefield and that it was devastated. Yeah. It was devastated that, that, that every village... Uh, you know, took damage and, 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 and all the you know, open wow. fields and, and, and those, these armies moving through and all of this. And, and uh, so it could well be that that first angel sounding was um, uh, personified in, in World War I, which at that time they didn't know it was just going to, it was going to be one of a series. Right. They, they just, just called, called it, it the, the Great, Great War. War. The Great War. The yeah. War to end all wars. Actually, it seems as though it started all wars. It kind of seems like it. And they're, yeah. uh, 
there is absolutely if you study if you are a student of history you see that the 20th century the 1900s is the bloodiest century of human history yeah and that's saying something dad because yeah. humans have been notoriously malicious oh yeah i mean oh, from yeah. cain and abel yeah. they've been malicious yeah and so when you look at from world war one on through the the 1900s or through that 20th century the most people died in war yeah during that century that's insane yes yes exactly. so it so the reason I say that is, is so it kind of makes sense when you're looking at monumental occasions that prophetic utterances would yeah. be capturing. It kind of makes sense that the trumpets are showing these really big events, these grotesque, yeah, but but big yeah. events. Notice this: the seals, by and large, show us movements. Okay. That begin right. and continue, and for the most part, are continuing right. today. They're not ending. Yeah. Okay. They are. The apostate they are church continues. Just in, entire movements. Right. Okay. Now, this the trumpets seem to be historical, or maybe not all historical, but they're all events that take place that cover a span of time, but they have a beginning, they have an ending, and, uh, and, and they are significant enough in, in human history and in our future, no mm -hmm. doubt, that, uh, that they would get noticed in heaven. Wow. And also, too, and we don't have time to go into this, but every one of these, if we go back and we look at them historically, the Jewish people, the Hebrew people, have a role to play in each one of them. Yeah. And that significantly affects them. Right. Amen. So, yeah. anyway. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, I thought it was. Well, well it was. <laughs> and that's really why I brought it Let me it just out. affirm that. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, yes. so, uh, so possibly the first Trump is, is the Great War. The second trumpet is World War II, so that brings us to the third trumpet. Well, before we do that, let's 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 look back Let at our chart for just a moment because I think that we can actually, if you pull the cap off of that, uh, we can say in the 1900s it looks like that trumpet one sounds and trumpet two sounds. Okay. And so we've now got our beginning point for these. Or it appears to be it the case. It appears to be. Yes. So, All there right. we are. Okay. And look at that. We got through the first two trumpets and never once mentioned Archduke Ferdinand. <laughs> well, that's two. Or the Kaiser. <laughs> Wilhelm aside. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's, exactly. It says in verse number 10 of Revelation 8, And the third angel sounded... And there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Okay. This third trumpet obviously is something that has taken place or will take place mm -hmm. since World War II. Okay. okay? And it says there fell a great star from heaven. Now, you and I and most of the people that are tuning in right. understand that our sun is a star and that... <clears throat> It's not even a particularly large star, but it is so much bigger than the Earth. Right. And that it is not technically possible for a star to fall, to fall to the upon the Earth. You know, it would be like saying that a hippopotamus fell upon an ant. 
Right. Okay. The ant would have I nothing left just to say. That. <laughs> the, the, the ant the, the, would not. The, he would hey, be. It would be the end of the story. Okay. <laughs> and so what we're saying is that we have to understand that it is not physically pro possible for a star to fall from the heavens upon the earth. Right. But something that looked like a star fell upon the earth. Okay. Okay. So we know that John was seeing something that was up and it came down. Okay. Okay. And it reminded him of, of a, a star, star. Although he had in his day no idea how big those suckers really were. Right. Yeah. Okay. So the third angel sounded, there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And uh, now, once again, too, it says it fell upon a third part of the rivers. Uh, and uh, keep in mind that all of these things things uh, are, are written as, as John sees them and he is seeing a certain part of the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, and it, uh, and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. Wormwood. Now, it's interesting. I don't speak a lot of foreign languages. In fact, I barely speak English. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this is not something that just came to me because I had this intricate knowledge of foreign languages. Okay. okay. But it did come to my attention. In fact, there was a time here that we had, uh, we were having a, another group meeting in our building that were Ukrainian. Uh, a Ukrainian church and they were meeting in our building and I had a discussion with one of these young men about this uh, and uh, because an event took place in my lifetime 1986 okay, okay. you were a mere five years old I was seven but thank seven, you seven that's right you were seven years old right. your brother was five yeah. sure and uh and you probably didn't really lose a lot of sleep over it, but it was quite a traumatic thing in the lives of those that understood some things because World War II had opened the eyes of a lot of people to the <coughs> immense power of an atomic bomb right. with the bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and, and Nagasaki. Nagasaki. Right. Amazing, amazing. And uh, so the, the thing that happened in 1986 was the single biggest nuclear disaster that has ever taken place up until this date. Okay. Now, uh, since that time, we have had the events that took place in Japan right. at Fukumuchi or whatever that was. Uh, Fukushima? Fukushima, is that it? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Anyway, and it was bad. And yes. It, and it was bad. Yes, it, was. it was bad. Um, but in 1986, in fact, I believe it was on April the 26th, and you don't remember dates unless it's something yeah. like September the 1st, 2000. September 11th, 2001. Yeah, that's it. Right. <laughs> you don't remember dates unless it's something really momentous. Yeah, right. But anyway. that's the wrong date. <laughs> yeah, 7 11. No, I mean 9 11. <laughs> Stop trying to remember <laughs> yes. the date. Yes. But yes. you'll never forget as, no, long, never as, as long as you live. As long as I live. So, anyway. Um, All right, so in 1986. 6. A. Nuclear reactor, nuclear reactor number four in a nuclear power plant in the Ukraine, which at that time was a member of the USSR, the Soviet Socialist Republic. 
of the United Soviet Socialist Republic, the country of Ukraine had a nuclear catastrophe. And what happened is that uh, the, 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 the nuclear reactor, uh, because of human error, right. overheated and exploded and the lid on top of this thing, which keep in mind, this is this is like a concrete lid that is several feet thick, right? And is huge. Yeah. I mean, much bigger than this building, right? And probably bigger than the building that you're in. Uh, it literally blew the lid off into the air, and it came back down. And I don't remember now, I think it sat partially back down on top of this reactor, but anyway, whatever, but it created quite the, for those, for those people that, uh, that saw it happen, yeah. uh, they didn't give too many eyewitness reports. Right. Okay, a whole lot of people were were killed and that and died over the course of the next several months and years. In fact, it was such a bad catastrophe that uh, it has been. How long has it been since 1986? It's well, it's been, been 35 years. 35, for sure. yeah, 35, 36 years, or whatever. Uh, it is still uninhabitable today. And they are saying that it will not be habitable for possibly 20,000 years. Uh, I don't believe that. Well, I don't believe that either. Uh, I, I don't think it will take longer than 17 or 18,000. I but, bet they got roaches already. Well, I, I'm sure they do because roaches can survive anything. Yeah, they can. Yeah. And uh, now what's interesting to me is that uh, HBO, I think it was or, or HBO, or uh, did a special on Chernobyl back uh, a few years ago, and uh, it caused such interest that it has become one of the biggest tourist attractions uh, of the Ukrainian people. They come from all over their country to go and see. Right. And I don't thing. know how close they let them get. Right. Okay. Uh, but basically, uh, to give you an idea of, of what a catastrophic event it was, the fallout from that nuclear explosion, uh, Russia or, or, or the Soviet Union just shut down everything. They wouldn't let anybody know about it. They didn't. It was very reminiscent of what China recently did with the China virus. Right. Or look, or what Russia did recently. Yes. With with COVID. Yes. Like Russia really yes. hasn't changed that much. They haven't <laughs> changed a whole lot. But they uh, they would not say anything about it, didn't let the information get out until the fallout from it drifted over Sweden. And someone said, hey, And Sweden said, why you is our radio get off of my cloud. <laughs> As the poet might say, As yes. As the poet might say. Uh, but the, the radioactive levels in Sweden were noticeably high, and so they began to look at this and check it out, and they they computed the directions of the winds. Oh, my Lord. And how they, they were able to, scientists were able to figure out exactly how, how old this stuff was, and they said, okay, it came from Ukraine. And... And uh, they were able to pinpoint it, and it forced them. They started asking them, questions. Yes, it forced them to, to it forced the Soviet Union to fess up about this disaster that took place, because because not only was it fallout in the air that reached as far as the United Kingdom. Good grief, man! It, 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 yes, they, they they were they were affected by it all the way to Britain, and and that was I don't even remember now. 1500 miles or something you know yeah. across Europe and so all of Europe basically and the rivers that 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 irrigate and feed so much of Europe essentially about a third of it 
yeah. uh, were polluted with the fallout. With fallout. Yes, and so people have been affected by that thing ever since. The the, the number of uh, uh, I imagine cancer went through oh, the roof. Cancer went through the roof. Uh, deformed babies. Yeah. Uh, in fact, this is what's so crazy is they they started advising any pregnant woman to have a to have an abortion so that she wouldn't have a deformed child because there was that that big yeah. of a chance that yes. there would be yes yes and so it wow. was quite a, of course now it wasn't it wasn't as big a story to us in America right. because we happened to be on the other side of the globe and the wind was blowing the other way right you know i mean it literally uh, was 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 blowing uh, at the time it was blowing from east to west and it carried it over Europe and even as high north as Sweden and, and as far as as, uh, as United Kingdom uh, so Man. it was quite the event now uh, and, and, and notice this it, it's it's obviously that now uh, did I even say this? But the 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 the, the word wormwood in Ukrainian is Chernobyl. Oh, <laughs> and so gotcha. this is what this is what first kind of connected right. the thinking on this is yeah. that says the name of the star is called wormwood, and the third part of the of the waters became wormwood, Man. and many men died of the waters because, because they, they were, were made, made bitter. bitter. And so that's yeah. all the information. Obviously, this was not a worldwide event as right. in perhaps World War Three or World, yeah. pardon me, World War II. Um, and I'll tell you what's interesting is, you know, I get frustrated with global warming activists who are anti- um, nuclear energy. Nuclear energy, yes. which is the cleanest form of the energy. The cleanest form of However, energy. However, yeah. when you have a nuclear accident like Chernobyl, yeah. that's what scares people. Is there like, but yeah. what about this? Gives it a bad name. But do you know, there was almost no one that was killed from the actual explosion. Right. There yeah. was a handful of scientists that, because they were under a communist government, uh -huh. see the Red Horseman. <laughs> that they were forced to go back in and right. deal with things right. that they yeah. were not protected to do. I think but, that there was But there nearly, was a tremendous yeah. amount of sickness yeah. um, because of, and, and death because of the fallout. Yeah, yeah. The fallout. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And in fact, exactly. they've even found in the United States that in places, you know, from, from like your generation and mom's, where areas where they were doing uh, testing, that it's possible that's why there was a higher incidence of thyroid disease, things of that yes, nature. Yes, they were like, yes. oops, we didn't think about that because well, we didn't know that would happen. Yeah, and it took them weeks before they ever thought about um, moving people away. Right. Uh, they initially just uh, what's the word when you evacuate? Evacuate. evacuate yeah. Yes. The, the they it took initially they evacuated an area that was only 18 miles across. Wow. Yeah. And so there there ended up being something like three or four hundred villages that were exposed to this radiation, yeah. to the radiation yeah, itself. Yeah. You know. And uh, and then on beyond that, now all the trees died, mm -hmm. and 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 it was kind of interesting because the trees when they died, they took on a strange color. Really? Uh, yeah, they did. They it was like they took on a I forget now. I read one description, and and uh, I. I, I Kind of a salmon color or something. Really? Yeah. That's creepy. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was because it was like the whole forest. Because that nuclear power plant was out in the middle of a forest. It right. was out in the middle well, of the forest. Well, I mean, forest. if you're going to have one, put it in the yeah. middle of nowhere. Well, and the little town of Chernobyl was actually nine miles from there. Wow. Yeah. So, but anyway. Uh, so, so, that, so we think that it's entirely possible. It is possible. That an, an explosion that uh, that looked like something bright falling yeah perhaps 
that um, that could have been the third trumpet, Chernobyl could being the been. same as could Wormwood, yeah. making the waters bitter, causing men to get sick and die. Yeah, and you know, we need to point out that that you know whether or not we are completely accurate on all of this, it's probably not going to make a, a a big difference in eternity for any of us. But we are trying to to pin down for us what things are going to look like in the end time mm -hmm. and what kind of a time schedule. Not not so that people say, well, I've got plenty of time, mm -mm. Uh, but really to alert people that, hey, you don't have a whole lot of time. Right. It's, it's time to get your relationship with God yeah. on an even keel. you you got to get ready. Yeah. you that got to get exactly ready. got to get ready. Well, got to get ready. Um, for those of you who need to know how to spell Chernobyl, Google it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was hoping you weren't going to ask me. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us for episode 11, uh, where we cover, covered uh, trumpets 1, 2, and 3, although not exactly in that order. A little bouncing around. Well, a little bouncing around. Uh, next time, we are going to talk uh, in episode 12 about trumpets 4 and 5. Yes, we are. And in continuing... We may, call it, we may call that one the other trumpets. The other trumpets. Yes. Right. Yes. Maybe we will. <laughs> Hope you can join us. Uh, we'll see you next time. God bless. <laughs>